Hi, I'm Oliver and welcome to Painting in the Shed. Uh, it took me a long time to think of that name. Um, I went through things like painting with Pen Gilly. It's technically not a shed, it's actually um, a small garage. Art with Ollie, Ollie with art, Oliver with art, Oliver Pen Gilly art. An easy stroke. Ollie's man shed. I'm going to take you through a painting, I'm going to do um, close ups and stuff so you can see how I paint. My materials, I'll be using acrylic and oil paint. Um, today I'm using oil paint but I don't want you to worry too much about the materials and the brushes and things like that because you know it, it doesn't really matter we're having fun we're painting we're creating something you, uh, you don't need to worry too much about materials what I would say is um, I use the mid price stuff not the really expensive and not the really cheap but somewhere in the middle also I'm starting this first episode with just a landscape painting because um, I want to ask you for your ideas of what you want to see me paint so if there's something I've painted before and you think how did you do that? Please message me either here or on my Facebook page or my website. I hope it goes well because this is my first one so I'm hoping that the, the painting will actually turn out alright. <laughs> okay so these are the colours I could be using. You can pause that if you didn't quite catch that. Uh, I thought I'd do a voiceover. Start off with white uh, on the areas that I want to keep white in the very beginning in the sky and then I sort of plot in the uh, horizon line with a bit of um, bit of the blue and a bit of the crimson, actually no, a bit of blue and a bit of burnt umber and and uh, basically so I'm using the, the burnt umber, the uh, the blue and the titanium white and I'm just uh, putting in the background clouds and I use the paint very thinly, I mean with oil paint you only need a, a tiny bit of colour to mix in with the white to actually get, get a nice thin coating on the canvas so when you start in the background you're sort of starting off thin with the sky with the paint you know and then you get thicker as you get you know towards the front of the painting so yeah I'm just adding more blue in there mixing it around a bit the good thing about oil paint is it stays wet for days so you can come back and blend it a bit more if you want to and change the sky and um, yeah you can keep moving it around which is the, the good thing about oil paint the brush I'm using is just a round uh, stipple brush um, you can buy all different types of uh, oil brushes and acrylic brushes. Um, what I would say is don't use small colour brushes, they're too soft. Don't don't use brushes that are too soft. It just won't move the oil paint around the canvas. So as you can see I'm blending in the sky. I mean skies are normally sort of lighter at the bottom and darker as they go up higher. Here I'm using just a bit of paint thinners and um, because I lost the light so I use a bit of paint thinners and I use a rag and I sort of wash off all the paint so that it's sort of white again. Um, which is quite a good technique to know. Uh, here I'm just blending in more of the clouds. Um, you, you can use different size brushes if you want, sort of different wispy type of clouds, depending on the sky that you're painting. Um, and you, like here, I'm just changing it, moving it around, um, adding clouds where I want them. Um, it's nice to have sort of darker clouds around the edges of the painting, just to draw your eye into the center where the light is. So here I'm adding more uh, burnt umber and the blue and the crimson. Okay, this is a big painting brush, and these are really cheap. You can buy them in a DIY shop. Um, so basically, I'm just moving the paint around with this, but gently, so gently touching the canvas, just barely touching the canvas and moving the paint around, um, just to soften some of the edges of some of the clouds. You know, depending on what type of clouds they are, I guess. Uh, the bottom of the canvas I use often just to wipe the brush off, just to. Uh, if I'm going to go back into the dark and I've had my brush in the, in the light colours, you don't want to go, you know, you don't want to mix the light and the dark too much. So here we are with a purpley colour for the background mountains. So you, you start with the sky, then you start with the background hills. Um, this is, again, it's the, a bit of crimson with a, a little bit of blue and white and a bit of burnt umber. Um, it's just all the same three or four colours, really. Um, you only start using the green when you get closer to, to, the, to you in the foreground. So here I'm just blending it. Um, yeah, I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> I'm watching it with you, so I'm watching the video and I'm trying to say what I'm doing. And that is a small round brush, uh, acrylic brush, um, and I've mixed just the just the blue and the burnt umber to make a real dark black colour. I never actually <clears throat> used black until again right at the front of the painting. Uh, here I'm starting to add a little bit of yellow ochre in with the with the blue to get this kind of olivey green colour as you can see there still using the small brush to give it little bits of texture in the background you don't want to show too much in the background and as you come further forward here you start adding a little bit of lemon yellow to it oh and a little bit of crimson as well yeah 
because you know on these hills on Dartmoor you get the sort of heather and things you get purples and browns and greens and so you're kind of just dipping in the brush just use whatever colors you you fancy really as long as they get they fade off in the distance again I'm using the uh, the blue and the and the uh, brown burnt umber I'm creating this wall going up the hill here and this is how I do a wall anyway I start off dark um, and then I add the lighter colors on top so here I am just just roughly scraping on the dark colors and then adding the white um, onto that because because the paint's always still wet you can just blend the white into the, the dark colors and can create the mid tones but if you want to keep going back keep going back to the white putting it on top of the wall because the light's coming from you know through the valley and it's hitting the top of the wall and a few of the rocks and on the top I actually found it's really hard doing this. I have to keep going back to it. And if you go wrong, just scrape it off and start again. You know, if you, if you find it's not looking right, um, don't worry too much about it. Here I'm using the old toothbrush. Uh, I use this for light effects and also for speckles on rocks. You know, when you look at a, an old rock, it's got like speckles and stuff on it. Uh, and now I'm using a palette knife. I mean, you can use whatever you want. If you find a nice looking twig in the garden, you can use that. But I'm scraping off the paint here with this. I'm scraping off the, the top line there. Now I'm adding black. This is the first time I'm actually using black. And I use it straight on the palette knife from the tube. And I just put in where I want the real, the darkest areas to be um, on the wall here uh, closest to you. Now I'm using a fan brush. Again, you know, you can buy all sorts of brushes, all different shapes and sizes, and see what effects you get with them. This is great for doing grass. But what I would say is, don't try and do every blade of grass. You're gonna you're gonna be frustrating yourself. So I just use the lemon yellow, straight lemon yellow, on the uh, fan brush, and I'm just um, putting in the highlights where the sun's just peeking through the clouds and hitting some of the grass. Then I decided I'm gonna put a tree here. Um, now I've, I use a lot of photographs, so I go out on Dartmoor and take lots of photographs, so if you need a photograph of a landscape or a tree, please just copy one, you know, it's it's fine. Um, this is something that I've done before, so I am I sort of know what, what shape tree it is. But I'm using a very small round brush here, like the smallest one, and this is great. If you just twiddle it and turn it and twist it and hold the brush very lightly, the, the, the branches kind of make their own, you know, their own shape. So, And that's it, pretty much. A bit of light on the tree there. And we're all done. It's all done now. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave a comment down here or send me a message if you have any suggestions for paintings you'd like to see me do. But before I end, I'd like to ask my friend Jim on his opinion. Jim Pooley, who's been doing all the music uh, for my videos for the last six or seven years. He's a, a, an amazing musician. You've probably noticed because the music's probably better than the actual video. He's yeah, uh, very talented. So I'd like to know his opinion on my work. So what do you think, Jim? What an incredible picture. Um, but enough about the screensaver. Um, there's always a lot of meaning in Ollie's pictures. Um, for me, uh, this uh, brings back bad memories of when I uh, almost lost a shoe on Dartmoor. Um, and for that very reason, um, yeah, it sort of brings back bad memories. Um, uh, I'm more interested in that painting in the background though, so hopefully he'll. Um, show us that one next time thanks Jim thank you so anyway on that note uh, yeah uh, I'll see you next time thanks for watching bye bye